The Empire of the Sun. We live in a world of wonders, a place of astonishing beauty and complexity. We have vast oceans, incredible weather, giant mountains, breathtaking landscapes. If you think this is all there is, that our planet exists in magnificent isolation, then you're wrong. The physicists are fascinated how laws and nature shapes all this, shape the world beyond our home planet. I think we're living through the greatest age of discovery our civilization, civilization is known. We voyage the furthest reaches of solar planet system. Photographs of strange new worlds stood on familiar landscapes, tasted alien air. A heart of it all is powerhouse of vast wonder. We greet each other, a star that controls each and every word of its of its thrill. Look at it at that. Oh my, the sun. And when it goes, it will be the end of us all. There it is for Enerus, for Hindus. It's one of the holiest sites in all India. Part of what makes it so special, the oration, orientation, the sacred river that flows past the city. This is the one place of the Granges where you bathe in a river on this shore and you can see the sun rise on the eastern shore. A place where the Ganges turns around and to the north. So you can do that. When the sun rises tomorrow, a truly extraordinary phenomena will take place. A total eclipse of the sun is a atrocious occasion. A place of ancient history of Hindus known as Solar City. Silence is different to all other systems of thought, belief systems. You can practice in this city of millennia because you don't need faith in it. You don't. You can check it that it works. For example, I tell you what, tomorrow morning, at precisely 6 foot 24 a.m., the moon will cover the face of the sun with a total solar eclipse. I tell you that in 2020. And in 2904, we fire solar eclipses on the Earth. I could tell you that on July 16th, 2186, it'll be the longest solar eclipse for 5,000 years, 7 minutes. Sun rains over the vast empires of worlds, all moving like clockwork. Everything within its realm obeys the laws of terrestrial mechanics, defined by Sir Isaac Newton in the 17th century. The laws allow us to predict exactly we, where each world would be for centuries to come. Whatever you happen to be, if, if there's moon between you and the sun, there'll be eclipse, of course, Jupiter, plenty of moons. This, this is a rare picture taken by the Hubble Space Telegraph Telescope in spring 2004. You see the shadows of three moons on the surface, three eclipses simultaneously. Now this kind of event only happens once every few decades. Saturn, plenty of moons. I think they're my favourite of all the pictures of eclipses in the solar system because they're pictures taken from the surface of Mars or the Trinity rover looking up at the sun. You can see the Mars moon, Phobos. It makes it all the way across the disk of the sun. It's a solar eclipse, a partial solar eclipse, the surface of another world. Strategies of the future will co- discover is part of equips and can measure up the ones up to the ones back home. Indian music playing on radio. And that's because here on Earth humans had the best seat in the solar system, which is to enjoy the spectacles of the total eclipse of the sun, all thanks to the wonderful quirk of fate. Now the sun is four hundred times the diameter of the moon, but by sheer coincidence it's four hundred miles away 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 from the earth. And when our moon passes in front of the sun, they can completely obscure it. There's something like, like between what's 145 and 167 moons in the solar system, depending on how you count them. But none of them produce such perfect eclipses as a moon, Earth's moon. Man chanting, people chattering. Brian Cox. It says the technical arrangement of the solar system means we're living in exactly the right place. And tomorrow morning, exactly the right time, you join the most precious of astronomical events. Our closest star is the strangest, most alien world in the solar system. It's a place we never, you can never hope to visit. But I want to show you that through space exploration, a few discoveries, our generations getting to know the sun. It's quizzic new detail. For us, it's everything, and yet it's just one ordinary star, but it's a hundred, about, Amongst 200 billion starry wonders make up our galaxy. There's a remote frontier on the solar system. A your planet known as Ceta. Uh, seen from out here, 13 billion kilometers 
away from the earth. The sun is just another star. Arrhenius says that about 10 billion kilometers closer in. But even so, sunrise is barely perceivable. Sun hangs in the sky, see 100 miles smaller than it appears on earth. Further in, we come to Saturn. Attack the rings reflect the sun's light, the dark side. The planet of Pinay did not touch the sunrise, but we ring, sh- we ring shade, shine. 230 million kilometers out, we arrive the world, the first world, with a familiar view of the sun. The sunsets on Mars are seen by a robotic rover spirit. Past Earth, 150 million kilometers out, we continue to head out the heart of the solar system. Mercury is in its closest planet, just 46 million kilometers out. Been so slowly at sunrise, the sun's, sun's rise is sunrise, lasts just, lasts for 176 Earth days. Beyond there is nothing but the naked sun, a colossal fiery spear, tortured matter burning with a temperature, the core over 15 million degrees Celsius. Throughout human history, there is a majestic wonder, constant source of comfort, or worship. This is Death Valley in California, regularly the hottest place on the planet. Today, the car says it's 101 degrees Fahrenheit, 45 degrees in centuries. For centuries, the funnest minds in Earth, science, struggled to understand the origin of the sun, seeming endless heat and energy. What is it made of? Where did it come from? All oh, what source of its phenomenal power? Then in 1833, British physicist John Hedrissel took an endeavor, an experimental attempt to catch a sunbeam. So how so much energy does it? So how much energy does it fall on the surface of Earth and the Sun? Coming out with a simple, brilliantly simple experiment using a thermometer, a tin full of water, and an umbrella. Basically, you let the water heat up a tin to ambient temperature. Where here in Ambrote Valley today is about forty-six degrees Celsius. You put a thermometer in the water. You take the shade away. Let the sun shine on the water. In direct sunlight, the water temperature begins to rise. I tell me how long it takes the sun to rise. Water temperature by one degree, so as you can figure out exactly how much energy the sun delivered in a can of water. From that, how much energy delivered the square meter surface. Turns out, on a clear day, when the sun is virtually overhead, the number is about about a kilowatt. As a hundred, as one o one o kilowatts can be powered by the sun's energy by, by every square meter squared on the Earth's surface. It's a atrocious leap of imagination. Hensel uses his figure to calculate tire energy given off by the sun. So imagine adding up these kilometers over the entire landscape. And then, then imagine following the sun rays of the cover the entire surface of the sun, earth. You can, you can then imagine this. The earth is 100 billion, 50 billion, 150 million kilometers away from the sun. So actually the sun is radiating energy out across the straight sphere, radius 150 Million kilometers surrounding our star. How much energy does that does that make it? It's four times pi times the distance of the sun. It's four hundred million 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 watts. That, that, is, that is a million times the power consumption of the United States every year, ready in one second. We work that out by using some water, thermometer, a tin, and umbrella. That's why I love physics. I wonder if our star is. It's a wonder that a star has just managed to keep up this phenomenal rate of energy production for millennia. Stars like the sun are incredibly long-lived and stable. And our best is estimate the age of the universe is 13 to 173 billion years. And the sun has been around for 5 billion years of that. More than a third of the age of the universe itself. So the possible power... So this could be allowed the sun to shine with such intensity day after day for five billion years. Best way to find the answer. Go back into the very beginning. It all began from a very pretty much nothing. At a time when this kind of another universe galaxy was all without light. Sun had not yet begun. Story of how the star was born. We read in the night sky. If you take a picture of the Milky Way, then one of the first things you notice are these dark lines, these dark clouds running up through it. It's just Absence of stars, in fact, the dark areas are called molecular clouds, the clouds of molecular hydrogen and dust that are lying in between us and the stars in the Milky Way galaxy. 
The dark clouds contain the raw material from which stars are made vast to the nurseries of the monks of the coldest, most isolated places in the galaxy. In the center of some of these clouds, the temperature is low, 10 degrees above zero. zero. Now it matters because temperature is a measure of how fast things are moving. So these clouds are clusters of hydrogen and dust are moving very slowly. Only extreme cold can gravity grab hold of clouds constant. Consistent particles, one million, only a million, begin to condense. That means a weak, weak force of gravity can take over. Begin to clump the hydrogen together. Now they name a clumps of hydrogen collapsing under the galaxy. Oh, gravity, stars. So these clouds of hydrogen collapse further and further under force of gravity. They begin to heat up. And eventually, they, in their cores, they become hot enough for hydrogen to begin to fuse together in the helium. The stars in night, the clouds are no longer black. The last circle of a new star had begun. A very story played out. Five billion years ago, when a star was born that would be known as the sun, its birth reveals the secret of our stars, its strongly resourcing forces of energy. For the sun, like every other star, was set alight by the most powerful known force in the universe. Fusion of hydrogen and helium, foundation of all stars' power, boundless energy it reaches out and connects its wonder to all the worlds of its realm. This indigo river, which flows in Panaya, one of the great rivers of the world, is of the, it's these river systems that drain all the rainfall from the southern Amazon basin, eventually into Atlantic. Which now, look how much water there is. Every molecule in this river, every molecule and every raindrop in every cloud transported from the Pacific over the Andes and just a con- continental interior here. Just imagine how much energy that needs. All that energy, every bit of it comes from the sun. Sun is the power that lifts the water on the blue planet. In places it comes down to create some of the most breathtaking of the earth. This is the ingrown on the falls, a quarter of a million gallons of water. Flow from every here every second, the spectacular energy of this falls. The wonderful example of how this planet is hardwired because constant and fairly power of sun. Energy we see from the sun can, may seem utterly cons, constant, but tiny fluctuations of brightness can be seen with digital camera right now. How? Now it's not too difficult to take a picture of the sun, even though it's 93 million in the, miles away because it's big. Of course, you have got to be careful. You've got to filter that takes out much, pretty much the light because focusing the light from a nuclear reactor onto what your camera or your retina wouldn't be a good great idea. So you've got to be careful. Take a picture. Well, this is our picture. The sun we took on May, June 20th, 2009. See, it's a beautiful orb, not the mark of the surface. I suppose it's pretty much what most people would expect. It's certainly what I've heard of Stussel and the ancient astronomers expected because they thought the heavens were perfect and changing. But look at the picture taken on March 29th, 2001. You'll see a completely different story. Surface sun that's covered in black spots, sunspots. Some of these vast structures are large enough to engulf the entire Earth. Base observations allowed us to track their numbers and the ebb and flow across the face of the sun. The greater the number of sunspots, the more powerful our star becomes, threatening everything from astronauts to electricity grids on Earth. We discovered that the sun has seasons. For decades, scientists have thought to understand how those subtle changes in the sun power by reflecting Earth. The puzzle that led one man to look away from the sun focused instead on rivers for the Angola Falls. Argentina Echophologis, Palo Menes. Palo, very large river. It's the fourth river in the world. I like the largest rivers in Paraguay. For example, Amazon and Congo. We have a data, a data of the river in this whole 20th century. So you look to what back to 1900? Yes, from 1900, 1904. It's because this river can't be navigated by lying on ships, cocks. Pablo brought these statistical tools of physicists to bear a hundred years worth precious river records. What emerged was that the river had a rhythm. You found the stream flow of the river goes up and down, up, up again and down again, three times during the century. We went further trying to understand why. Cots amount of water in Paraguay River seems to be allowing the pattern. The question is, what would it be driving the change in these vast river systems? Pedro first looked to the sunspot cycle, but found no fit. 
He so he said he turned to calculations that described the sun's underlying brightness during the last century. Show me what happens when you superpose this data. So the data on the water levels of the river. You see what the sun goes up, the river goes up. So what he's saying is that around 1925, so there's more solar activity. So about really solar radiation falling off, right? Relatively more actively solar radiative activity. There's three periods that we see there. I mean, it's beautiful correlation between water flow, flowing into these rivers. Yes, it is. And solar output. Pablo, yes, it is. We find it a very striking correlation. Professor Brian Cox. Changes in the sun seem to move weather systems everywhere, too. In the Indian, the moon sun appears to follow a similar pattern to the Arrow River, whereas the Sahara and the opposite seems to occur. More solar activity, less rain. Exact mechanisms of which star may affect us this weather remain for now a mystery. We know the energy production rate in the sun and power release of fusion reactions the core is very constant indeed. It doesn't change as far as we can tell. So the changes that we must see must be due to the way the energy gets to the sun. Out of, gets out of the sun. And whilst it's out, only a tenth of percent, percent level, the kind of radiation that falls to the surface of the Earth, it really does reveal the intimacy and delicacy of this collection between the sun and the Earth. This connection is a secret to that. And over the world's sun's wonders, all the stars in the universe, we know only one, where it's from and horizon, which feeds on the starlight. It leaves a wonderful machine, nature's way of harvesting power sun. The fussy eaters evolved to use such a just a fraction of sunlight makes it way for through any atmosphere. Here's the surface on the surface of sunlight may appear white. Even when you pass through its prism, you make it you see it made up of all colours of rainbow. Prism spits sunlight into compound colours. Even in the red, green and blue photons. It's just that their colour that distinguishes them. Red photons don't carry much energy. They have any light, there are lots of lights on them, there are lots of them, whereas the blue photons, although they are very fewer, carry a lot of energy. The plants use the red bit, the spectrum, they use the blue bit for the spectrum. They don't use as much, as much as the green that's reflected. So what's, that's why you, when you look around the forest like this, sunny day, you don't, you just see a sea of green, so it's wonderful colour for the forest. All down how many plants are adapted to quality to start starting on light. His ability to harvest sunlight, which lies at base of complex food chain, nourishing in pretty much all life on Earth. Each and every one of us is sustained by sunlight. An umbilical cord of sunlight shining and it stretches across 150 billion kilometers of space. Beyond the visible power of the sun lies another realm. And steam forces, which maintains the influence of its domain. Very coolly, the solar system changes itself. So what did we can glimpse this invisible kingdom with our own eyes? It's 2028, 20, so time is first contact. You don't can't see a disk of the sun, a moment obscured by low cloud. Yet the moon at this point is just beginning to touch the disk of the sun. You can see the sun emerging from the clouds. You can see the disk. Oh, you can see the moon. Can you see the moon on top? Oh, yeah. Just vanish. You can see the limb of the moon there? Absolutely fantastic. Oh, very good. Yeah, you see the sun? You can see that the celestial mechanics of clockwork the solar system work, the alignment is absolutely perfect. Look at that. You know, if you never need to convince him that we live in a solar system, we, that we are being a ball of rock orbiting around the sun, other balls of rock, then look at that. That's the solar system coming down and grabbing you by the throat. Sun's face is now completely shrouded by the moon. Now, only, now only during totality is it hidden wonder of the sun revealed. Now look, that sun's, that's the sun's atmosphere, not the clouds. There are no clouds there now. That's the sun of the corona. It's the atmosphere of the star, star shining out. The sun atmosphere is strange. They have a thin collection of charged particles, protons, electrons, through mechanisms that we don't really fully understand. Corona is about hotter than the surface. Here, temperatures soar to over a billion, million degrees Celsius, some 200 times hotter than the visible surface. Each and every day, right to the very top of the atmosphere, some of the most Agenic, agenic coronal particles escaping. The sun leaks nearly 7 billion tons of corona 
every hour's face. Fires have superheated, supersonic collection of smashed atoms that a mass are known as solar wind. They begin the epic journey that will see the sun's breath reach out furthest past the solar system. Look at that. All too soon, this brief glimpse of the solar wind origin is gone. It's the most incredible thing I've ever seen, actually. Amazing when the sun is re-emerged behind, behind the moon. Everything just like that goes up to it. The winds and the wind may be visible to us, but every day, tiny pieces of a star are constantly blowing our way. By now, the time the solar wind reaches the Earth, it's pretty dilute. You know, if you go, would go to the space close to the Earth, hold your hand up there, you wouldn't feel anything. In fact, about five protons of five electrons for every sugar cube are worth a bit of, worth a bit of space. But still they're travelling very fast and carry a lot of energy. Enough energy, in fact, over time to blow the Earth's atmosphere off into space. So how does life on our planet survive this lethal gale? Um, my answer, I have had to know a summery winter's, summer's day in the Arctic. It's hard to imagine a, a star to be fret, but high above the steady solar particles are streaming our way to speeds toppling a million kilometers an hour down in Earth's surface to be protected from the intense solar wind that's battering our planet because the Earth has a natural shield that deflects most of the solar around it. You see that shield? You need a simple shield detector, which is a compass, and because the solar field is a magnetic, invisible shell that surrounds the planet, protective cocoon, very similar to the shape of the field around the bar magnet. And you can see the shape by moving a compass around it. A compass needle follows the magnetic line lines. The earth field is actually very similar to the shape of this one. The magnetic field and makes some deep within its on Earth's a planet spinning iron rich core. It's a gigantic false field, known as a megastoke spore spear. It affects most of the lethal solar Wind harmlessly away into space. A planet does not completely. Solar wind hits the Earth's magnetic field, tilts it, it stretches the field out night side of the planet. In some ways, it goes stretch. It's like stretching a piece of elastic. More and more energy goes in the field. Over time, this energy builds up, stretching the tile so it can no longer hold on to it all. And eventually, the energy is released. We are accelerating stream of electricity, charged particles, field lines towards the poles. These particles have energized the solar wind. Here they are exactly they create one of the most beautiful sights in nature, the Aura Boleris, or Northern Lights. I come to the far from north of Norway in the hope of seeing the northern solar wind's influence on our planet. We must have to see the majestic aurora the first time. Seeing an aurora at any given night is far from certain. It shortened the odds. I recruited the help of this to this. This is Michael Mike, Mike Lockwood. Mike, not that I'm complaining. Other for a reason of pure enjoyment. Why do you have to come to the Arctic Circle or snowball mobiles? Me to get out of the city because the street lights produce light pollution actually to make it hard to see the Laura. Laura. It's good to come at the end of winter because actually energy we take out of solar but it's a little bit stronger. Yes. Yeah, this is, I suppose, then the perfect day because it's in flat with late March, completely blue sky. Mike Fabulous is this day's got eighty percent chance tonight. Brian Cox. Soon after dusk, the returning, despite clear skies, no early performance from the aurora. So where uh, we wait? Mike runs a film loop, and all the lights are seen. It's special protective. There, yeah, it's a beautiful image. I haven't seen an image like that before. Is it taken from above the pole? Yeah. There's a spacecraft in orbit around this planet. Yes, going coming from the pole going from pole to pole. From space you can really see the impact of the wind. Its energy feeds on the unbroken circuit of Laura that surrounds the pole. You feel that the display that out there there just for here for us here. But when you see the pictures from space you realise everyone in the oval is getting a display as well. Well, my hope is that we were directly underneath the tiny thin band. Yes, tonight he and Toroso. Totally unlucky. Our luck holds out. The sky remains crystal clear to little. Last energy bolt was solar wind. Gets the upper atmosphere right. Absolutely amazing sight. It's a little more like cut of the green. It doesn't look like me, to me to like cascading down. It means like it's rising up from the ground. Quite incredibly beautiful. I thought that before I seen it. 
I, I, I would think that was more wonderful because I knew I'd be in a visual manifestation. There's a magnetic field protecting us from the sort of wind. But I didn't think that. Actually, over the lot there, what, there was a green shaft of life. Looks like they're rising out of the mountain in the distance. Looks like spirits drifting out from the mountain into heaven. Absolutely magnificent. Our environment doesn't stop the edge of our atmosphere. In fact, our environment stretches at least as far as the sun. Which is an obvious statement to make in the daytime, because you can feel the heat of the sun. But in the nighttime, you can see the, uh, you see, you see this other side. You see the unseen of the constant with solar wind. Beyond the earth, the wind and the solar wind continues to race out to the solar system, where it encounters a planet with a metro sphere, a railroad swing up. Jupiter's magnetic field is the largest, most powerful in the solar system. Seen from the Hubble Space Telegraph, the aurora, a permanent feature of the Jova poles. Saturn, too, but puts on impressive display as seen in this remarkable footage. Eventually, through the way beyond the planets, the solar wind begins to run out of steam. It travels non stop for 60 billion kilometers, over 100 times the distance of the Earth and the Sun. Incredibly, you have a probe out there about to discover exactly where the Sun, wind from the Sun ends. When it's about five, I collected these cars, a race into space, comes to Sputnik and its great history of space. And right in the end is speculative. Stuff at Moon Base, a man mission to Mars, on November 12th, 1991. We're going to leave. And there is a great grand tour of the proposal by NASA to go Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Newton, 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 Neptune. And he, and he actually went, I remember 77 and being sighted and watching, launched and thinking, this is my car come to pass. It could be, came, could be astonishing, I think. We make contact with these things now. Pair of spacecraft set out a grand tour. Those is one, two. Both are alive and well. Voyager one reports back to Earth here. Now I also my book and this picture of Gold Soul. Well, it's my station in the Mother Desert. There it is. So in 200 feet, or is it a mine as time his book was written? Expanded since. One of the few telescopes in the world that were capable of communicating a Voyager, which is 10 billion miles away from Earth. Today, a good storm station. Listen, of the faintest whisper of Voyager 1. Just call 233. Three. Oh, shoot, it's almost there now. So you should be seeing it coming in. Voyager is so far away, it takes the signal around 15 hours to arrive. Traveling the speed of light. Oh, that the triangle? Yeah, that's right there. There it goes. Yeah, right. It may appear in one and blip on the screen, but for me it's beautiful. I mean, you might just have to think about this little thing, no bigger than a bus, the double back a bus, designed in the late 60s, launched in the mid 80s, 70s, and still functioning 32 years later. Same good science data, they'll come in the little spacecraft. I think it's absolutely wonderful, both Voyager Sun's craft are constantly measuring so the wind as it fades away. One day, soon they'll find a place where the sun, the last physical trace, finally runs out. They'll leave the star that raised them behind. And head off this into a set of space. Even at that pace, 10 billion miles away, solar meets an instellar wind. Isn't the end of the story? Isn't the edge of the sun's influence? The sun is the final visible force. It reaches out much further. And the star is by far the largest one in the solar system. In fact, it's alone in 99% of the solar system mass. It's the immensity that gives the sun its furthest reaching influence gravitatory. Its gravitational fall dominates all the planets of ground. Gravity to it. The Earth, of course, example, 23 million away, miles away, is also known as one well school unit. So it represents it by one centimeter. Most distant planet, Neptune, 30 strong kilometers. Units or so is 30 centimeters. So you meet the Kuroi belt objects, of which Pluto, the next planet, is a member. They have a region around 50 astronomical units. So then the size of the solar system in terms of well, all the planets are all the belt. So it's uh, objects of uh, Pluto, but that doesn't stop here. Beyond Pluto, it's a cocktail, extremely dilute gas and dust, mostly just hydrogen and helium, just over from the universe beginning at the Big Bang. And every now and then, you'll counter lumps of ice in vast object, orbits, take millennia to loop around the sun. A cloud of snowballs is called the orbit cloud. It's astonishing the sun's grip is so strong that objects, the orbit cloud keep popping all the way out there. 
In a cloud of dirty snowballs, still gravity bound to the sun, stands out 50,000 kilometer units on a scale as half a kilometer from the sun. And remember, the Earth is only centimeters away. And then the full extent of that, that, this is then the full extent of the sun's empire. And then this gravitational touch remains a cold on ice, enclosing the sun in a colossal sphere. Beyond the orbit cloud, there is nothing. Only sunlight escapes. Light that will take four years, but reaches the sun's closest neighbor, Proxima Cetae, a red dwarf star among the 200 billion others that make up the Milky Way. By looking here, deep in the local, local galactic brotherhood, we're learning to read the story of own stuns, ultimate fate. Sun's empire is so vast, so ancient, and its power is so immense. It seems like an atrocious fault to think we never begin to comprehend its end, the death of the stun. But this is what astronomers are trying to do. I mean, they come here to most of the most barren desert on the earth, a communion in Chile, and because the sky is a sun as clear as on earth. The end of my journey for the empire of the sun. I come to Pananel, high up in the most extinct volcano, home to the most, most powerful ray of scopes. I've got to this, it's great. Yet info, great informative information. You know, you should know it's safe stay in Paramel. Because it's about two and a hundred thousand meters or two and a half kilometers in the air. I say here that uh, during that stay of appearance, and even following, consult, consult the paramedic immediately. It says, it says headache, there's this breathing problems, reading of blocking the ears, seeing stars. And it says, if you see stars at Panama's Observatory, consult the paramedic immediately. Perch high above the clouds, four colossal instruments make up European Southern Astronomy's very large telescope, or VLT. Even the human and naked eye, see here, is the spectacular. First thing you notice, streaking across the sky, the Milky Way. You no doubt you look at the, we live in a galaxy of billion stars. Next thing you notice, is you may look a bit more carefully. The stars are not just wild pints of light against the blackness of the sky. They were actually coloured. You see orangey red stars and yellow stars, and bluey white stars, absolutely beautiful. Astronomers are gazed upon a galaxy full of stars at all stages of their lives. The useful bright ones to middle aged willow ones, eerie some of the sun, and charted the nearest ten thousand of them. A range of each according to its colour and brightness, what emerges most powerful and elegant tools, whole astrology, the Hesbug Russell diagram. A so this diagram allows astronauts Astronomers to predict the history and the evolution of stars, tick the future life of our sun. There is a real structure here. It's a line that goes up from red stars from the yellow stars to white stars. This is called the main sequence. Sun will spend most of his life in the main sequence, steadily burning its vast reserves of hydrogen and fuel, which will last for at least another five billion years. But eventually the fuel will run out, a coal will collapse. And something remarkable will happen. The sun, the outer layers will expand, its colours will shift. Mercury be a little more than a memory is engulfed by spanning a red sun. It goes to two hundred times its size together, stretching all the way into the Earth's orbit, where our planet's prospects are dim. A wonder that remains so constant throughout so all the ten million billion years of life, and in those days of great red giant star, for brief but instance, it meant to be two thousand bright as it is now, but it won't be last for long. Eventually it shed its own layers and all that we left with cooling core, a faint cinder that will grow ever growing well pretty much until the end of time. All the wonders of Aurora glance through the atmosphere, the planets, the solar system. It like sustains the life here on Earth will be gone. But the gas the, the dust of the dying sun will drift off into space to form a vast dark cloud, prime and full of possibilities, till one day another star will be born. Perhaps a similar story to tell, a greatest story of the cosmos.